Welcome to a new video. In this video we will open the rewards. Uh, midweek rewards we did very very well, surprisingly well actually. I didn't think this was the game week where we would shine so bright when it comes to the scores. And you guys probably know it was international midweek. So the scores for getting a reward was pretty low. Which we love to see and uh, if you scroll down here we can see on the screen. We had two teams out, one in limited and one in rare. And in limited, we were 12 points away from getting a tier 5 with 253 points. That is criminally low. But let's scroll up. And here we have Cap 240 Rare. Yeah, this was a roller coaster of emotions, to say at least. And we did very well by going for the 240 point mark, where we get, I think it's $60 or something, compared to going for the lower one. Uh, and the thing I uh, liked very very much with this team was that also uh, I was very close to putting them in all-star rare and also choosing a different point uh, target, the one above actually, because I thought this team would do even better than they actually did, but still I can't complain at all because Daddy Ward didn't do, be uh, do his best, but I think he thought he was pretty decent actually. Chris Mepam, 48 pointer and conceding, not bad at all. Uh, Harry Sotar doing Harry Sotar type things for Australia. Uh, he has won me now three consecutive thresholds. Of course, the last time there were the regular 280 points threshold, but he delivers again, love to see it. Uh, and he's just a monster when uh, he plays for Australia. Uh, Harry Wilson, uh, the same, bought him recently for this midweek. In specific, he got an assist. Uh, you can't expect more from him. From him. And Daniel James got benched. I thought this team was dead. Uh, of course he came on. Uh, he snatched the ball from the defender, 1-1 one -on -one against Haradeki, dribbled around him and scored. Just incredible goal. I'm so happy for Daniel James. Finally finding his form and the rhythm. Just, uh, I love to see him play now. Uh, and um, yeah, incredible. So now we have rewards to open. Uh, let's go over here. And first of all, we have uh, coins. I don't. I think it's like 200 or 300. Um, and then we have, of course, the threshold. Cap to 40 rare threshold. I love to win the threshold. We have actually chosen Ethereum because now I believe Ethereum will go hopefully up. But of course, I'm late. I know nothing about crypto, so don't take my word for it. But I've heard a lot of people saying you should take Ethereum because, of course, the crypto. Every almost every crypto is going up now. Uh, of course. It may go down a lot in the next few days, but I also want to invest the money. So if I could earn a little bit more from the Ethereum before buying new players, that would be nice. But once again, I don't, I know nothing about crypto. But now we have tier three, cap to 40 rare, 14th place actually, which is pretty decent. What do we want? I want a forward. That is something I want. Forward that place. That is the only thing I want. Or I would be happy with a player that has potential. Netherlands. Defender from Twente? Small. I thought, like I've seen some people on Twitter using him. Isn't that pretty good? Let's check. I think that is very good. But I'm not a Twente fan. He's going for... Six, $60 for a low... Like, that is incredible. And people complain about uh, sorry rewards. Uh, of course, I have complained a lot about it as well, so I'm not going to pretend that I'm... But like, this is an incredible reward for me. Wow. Oh, look at these scores right here. And look at these recent scores. They are decent. Of course, he haven't uh, kept a clean sheet in a long time. Or here he did, yeah. And then he got 89 pointer. Like, I'm so happy with this. Geese, small. What a player to get. Like, this is a low tier 3, I think. Oh my days, like I'm so happy to get him, like this is just insane for me. How, like recently the rewards haven't made sense to me, because I think this reward is better than one got by a tier one or something, because I'm so happy with this, don't get me wrong, so extremely happy. Um, and I don't know why, because I don't deserve this player in this game week. Okay, so the Netherlands uh, League, is that, because this is insane if I can actually be able to use him in Challenger. I don't know if the air advice is Challenger or Contender. Please leave that in the comments as well. I think it's Contender. Uh, is it Contender or Challenger? I don't know. I need to find that out. 
uh, I hope it's Challenger because then I may keep him. And leave the comments, do you think he will go up in value? Do you think he will keep on performing? And maybe go back to his old self with this course? Or should I sell him and cash in and maybe use that money on some other players? Because you know me, now we can just go through players I have been trying to uh, target. I have deposited a little bit of money uh, I got from uh, my job uh, into Sorare and because I want another goalkeeper. Uh, and a goalkeeper I haven't looked for a long time, you probably know, is Nubel. But the big problem with Nubel is that his price are, I think, way too expensive. His new season card is 290 euros. His old season card is 205 euros. Maybe the 205 euros old season card could be worth it, but of course I have Mittelstadt old season card. So playing those two, they doesn't align too well because then I need to play them in classic season and I want to play them in in season. So then I need to spend almost 300 euros for Nubel when I can get a Jan Oblak for a similar type of price. If we go to his cards, no, he's a little bit more expensive, don't get me wrong, but um, let's go to rare. Mm, yeah, to, yeah, he's a little bit more expensive. But still, like that price difference isn't worth it for me personally, I think. His all season card, I think, is very, very reasonable. And also, also in terms of his scores, uh, Stuttgart isn't the team that keeps a lot of clean sheets, and of course, they have kept a clean sheet in their last two games. But on another side, I don't think they will consistently manage to do that. Um, and that was also my plan to have... Um, uh, but like the one thing that is very bad with this, and the reason I want a German goalkeeper is because, of course, in game week 465, the La Liga doesn't have any fixtures. And that is very bad. Then I have like four, so many Stuttgart outfield players with no goalkeeper to pair them up with. Yeah, Dortmund away is hard, but... Like Stuttgart is a team that could go there and win 2 or 3 nil, and if I have a full collection, yeah, the only thing I lose is one lineup, one dead lineup. But for example, when I have goalkeepers with good fixtures, do I want to risk them with the Stuttgart collection? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, like, uh, it's so hard, man, because I don't know what I want to do. Of course, I could try to off, but the, his guy, this guy right here, don't want to go down too much in value. And I think, personally, the value I'm getting out for him won't be worth it because also the uncertainty is so damaging for me because I don't know what will happen next season. I have one, two, maybe three, four, maybe five good game weeks left with him. And is it worth it to buy a goalkeeper with no certainty to only have him in one game week when they play Dortmund away where they will most likely concede? I don't know. I don't think so. And of course, yeah, like I, you, you can just watch me. I'm so conflicted by this. And do I want to invest more into this game? Yes, because I think the prices will go up. Although we have seen in recent times they have gone down, but we need to just expect that the prices will go down until the end of the season now, because of course you are at the end of the season. And when the new season slowly starting to begin, they will rise again. Um, but yeah, like this is very hard for me, but he's a player I want, don't get me wrong, but like the Bayern München situation, they want a new contract with him, like it puts me a little bit off. If I could have gotten the new season card for 200 euros, I would have taken it and ran away 100 times out of 100 times, but now 100 euros more, it's a little bit on the expensive sides. Uh, and also, um, he says he wants to be a starter goalkeeper, but I think he won't go straight into a Bayern München side when Manuel Neuer plays, when Ullerich also plays. I think it's hard. But um, now, uh, that was just an update. And I want to make a specific video about all my signings because if I'm not signing Nubel, I will uh, upgrade elsewhere in the gallery, definitely. Because I don't like to just let the Euro sit there. I may buy a challenger or contender team. And firstly, I want to find out if the Netherlands or the Air Advice is a challenger or a contender side. Um, uh, in on Sawyer, of course. But now, uh, Lionel Builder, we have probably the most important midweek on my Sawyer career. And I want to explain you why. Second Division Europe, uh, there are two game weeks in Second Division Europe. And I have a full starter lineup. I have Sarkis, the only goalkeeper that I've actually saw a card this game week. I think I'm pretty sure of it. If we go to Pro, 
Uh, here we can go to second division Europe that is going to be here. Top 10 win prices with the top three wins cash. And if we go to matches, there are only two matches, Millwall and Leicester. And if we go back, I have probably every single Leicester player that have a minted card. Valdfass, nailed on probably. Duisbu Hall, most likely nailed on. Jamie fucking Vardy, uh, one of my favorite players, if not my favorite player. Uh, not in the world, but when it comes to Leicester, behind Duisbu Hall, of course. Um, and then we also have Yannick Vestegård. And this is a team that I will actually be surprised if they don't win. Win the entire thing, and like, I get a tier 1, which is incredible, and also $75. That is the goal this midweek, of course. We know like that Enzo Maneska may switch out, for example, Valdfast, not Valdfast, but Jamie Vardy, he's a risk. But Patson Daka is on international break, do you want to play him right after you have came home? I don't know. But like this will most likely be the lineup, and this is something I've prepared, prepared for for almost three weeks. Not in terms of these four players, but I was tempted to sell all my lesser players. But I said no, because I know this game week we will most likely earn that money back from not selling them before. If we win, we, we, this would have been worth it. And also I've bought uh, Matja Sarkic, uh, because that just increases the chance of us actually doing very well. And another uh, lineup we may put out there is cap to 40. Where we could either go for Daniel James or Patson Daka. I think Daniel James won't start, but I think he did very well. And it would make sense if Daniel James starts against Poland, because um, Poland will play another way. He's a good counter player. And let's say we put him in there. The only problem now is that we don't afford Hamza Shuduri, which is the extra player that would fit in here. We can't afford him. So another thing we could do is to take Patson Daka with one less crystal point cost. And then we actually afford this team right here, which looks pretty decent in my opinion. Of course, Chris Palm, we could take Chris Palm instead of James Justin, but I don't think Wales will keep a clean sheet. So the team could be looking like this. And now the question, do we go for the middle target or the lower target? Me personally, I have no belief that this will hit the middle target, because of course, Bristol away, I don't know if Leicester will keep a clean sheet. 42% and also Danny Ward, 40% that is actually pretty decent against Poland. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like this could be the team we are going for. And also Hamza Shadouri, he, he isn't like the high peak scorer and also Patson Daka will most likely be benched. And it's of course an uncertainty if he will come on at all. That is the difference between him and Daniel James. Daniel James will come on. So this will most likely be the teams for the upcoming midweek. Uh, and also tomorrow, I don't know which video I'll make, but probably something around new signings and etc. But from Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday I will make a series. Or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday I will see how long the series will go. Where I will go through different topics each day to prepare you for the transition period. And going through my members galleries and going through mistakes and um, things, uh, things they are of course doing well. So you guys can also learn in the process. I will go through everything there. Uh, so just stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, also by the way, for you guys, uh, members, uh, it will be very exciting in the future because I have some new plans when it comes to tournaments. Uh, I won't spoil too much, but stay tuned and I will of course catch you in the next one. Bye bye and take care. Peace.